In today's video, I'll be flipping a furniture piece inspired by the TikTok trend, Coastal Grandma Style. And as you can see, I've dressed for the occasion as well. To find out how Coastal Grandma Style translates to furniture design and to see how much someone is willing to pay for it, continue watching. Before we get started on this sideboard flip, let's look at what is Grandma Style. So grandma style is a term and aesthetic that has been going around on TikTok, mostly in fashion. It was a term coined by Lex Nicoletta from TikTok. The biggest inspiration is taken from the film Something's Gotta Give, with Diane Keaton as the heroine and look of this style. This look is all about simple elegance, and it's very relaxed and comfy, also quite textural. So you'll be layering different fabrics such as cotton, linens, wools, cashmere. You'll see a lot of warm colours such as beiges, taupes and whites and then this is contrasted with some of the cooler tones such as soft greens, sages and blues. So in thinking about the colours and textures for the Coastal Grandma look, think about beachy blues and sandy hues. So how do we take this clothing aesthetic and transform it into an interior scheme? I've got a few mood boards to show you just how. My first mood board is a very classic and calm look with majority of whites and soft blues contrasted with warm oaks and delicate pinstripe ticking fabric on the soft furnishings and in the rug as well. In mood board two have gone for a more modern and youthful look. So here I'm using a higher contrast of blues and colours. This look is a lot more textured. It's also a bit more playful in the accessories and the shapes that I've used. Now that I've shown you the two interior schemes, I think I'm leaning towards number two. I like how it has a bit more higher contrast. There's more depths and richness of colours and I think this would just be more fun to paint as well. So I'm definitely going for number two, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about which mood board you preferred. Now we've gone through the style, let's get into the flip. Thrift stores and op shops are my go-to destination when looking to source furniture. When I saw this sideboard, I knew it had so much potential. The shape and the lines of this sideboard were already quite clean and modern. Anytime I'm looking at furniture to flip, I go through all the drawers and pull them all out. I also check the back boarding of the furniture piece to make sure that it's in good condition and I don't have to replace it because I definitely want to make sure I'm not spending too much time in doing repairs. Thankfully I could see there were no defects, so I snapped up this piece for $80 and better yet it was on discount from $150, so a great score. I'm first giving it a good dust and clean out from under the base and then I'm going to begin removing these support feet as they seemed a little bit uneven through the wear and tear over time. So just removing the supports and the nail heads and then I can get started on sanding. Using my Rotex sander I begin on a coarse grit of 80. With the top varnish removed, I can begin the oh so fun task of sanding the edges and details by hand. I'm inserting a card inside the sanding pad to give it a bit more strength and support as I'm sanding into the beveling details of this sideboard top. This hand sanding took about maybe half an hour or so, but the result was definitely worth it. To give it that ultra smooth finish, I then use a 120 grit and finish finally on a 180. To pull off the modern coastal look, I knew that I was going to use these gorgeous marble textured knobs from my website called Hector, but I wasn't sure on what colour to go for. So I painted a few swatches to see if I wanted to go for a soft blue, a sort of darker navy or a teal. As I was removing the cabinet fronts and the hinges, I was looking at the colours above and I just didn't like any of the options that I had painted out. I decided to make a custom colour. I'm so much happier with this custom shade of blue. It's really fresh and vibrant. And I think it's just a bit more playful and fun than the other colors that I had tried out. If you're wanting to replicate this Coastal Grandma look at home, you could use a Dixie Belle in the dusty blue, the Melange called Traveler, or a Paisley in the Fusion Mineral paint. A great tip if you wanted to reuse your brushes without having to wash in between is just wrapping it up in some glad wrap and it'll be good to use next time you come to paint. To give a really clean professional look on the inside of the cabinet, I'm just applying some masking tape to have a really clean sharp line. And now I can get started on the second and final coat. As I was working on quite a nice day, this chalk paint finish dried within about three hours. Because of that, I was able to wax and protect the piece on the same day.
giving this pine timber a whitewash finish is going to give it a really soft texture and warmth and will pair really nicely with the fresh white marble knobs that I've used as well. I'm using a small fine paintbrush to get into the open pores of the side bevel details as it does require a bit more of a stronger application and absorbs a lot more of the finish so using a finer paintbrush just gets into all those nooks and crannies on the timber grain. With my wider brush I'm just applying on the wash and then wiping off the excess and working in small sections. To create this white wash, I used Casement's Fusion Mineral Paint and mixed it in with water. If you find that your paint is a bit too thick, you can always add in more water or spray the top of your timber surface prior to painting the finish. With the whitewash timber now dry, I can apply hemp oil and this is going to give it a really nice protective coat and durability for future use. Finally, we're now up to the last stage and reattaching the cabinet fronts. I did find because I did chalk paint over the framing of it, I did have to drill in a bit of the holes beforehand so that way it was easier to reattach the cabinet fronts. So let's take a look back at how we began. I absolutely love how this sideboard turned out and if I lived by the sea this would be perfect but I bought it to sell so let's go through the numbers. The sideboard cost me $80 and in all up materials would have been about $15. For the new decorative knobs called Hector they were $10.50 each and as I used six that ended up being a total of $63. So that gives me an all-in cost of $158. I listed this piece for $550 on Facebook Marketplace and a few days later someone bought it for the full asking. So that gives me an incredible profit of $392. This incredible profit of $392 will be going and added towards my wedding savings kitty. So if you saw my last video, uh, you would have heard that I'm in the stages of planning my wedding for next year, November. So a lot of these flips that I'll be doing will be contributing towards that wedding budget. So with the profit of today's flip towards this kitty, I now have $957 saved. I hope you enjoyed my translation of the Coastal Grandma style and make sure you're subscribed to be notified for my next coming flip, these bedsides. So thanks for watching and see you next time.